A Good Person Guide to Help with Dating Chapter 1 Be Likeable and Friendly Be a Good Person 1 I was brought up a Catholic on the Ten Commandments from Exodus, 20,1-17 of the Old Testament of the Holy Bible. It is sometimes called the basis of Mosaic law after Moses who brought the tablets down from the mountain, given to him by God. They basically say don't kill, lie, steal, or cheat. I saw a 1936 movie Green Pastures with an all-black cast at moviebb.net. These black guys are acting out the Old Testament in a modern-day setting. They end it with two scenes. A bunch of guys going off to war with guns saying we'll fight to the last man. A baby. The message was that we have a choice. We always seem to devolve to evil. Just read the Old Testament. According to Zechariah Sitchin's 1976 book The Twelfth Planet, a group of space beings called the Anunnaki from planet Nibiru genetically created the human race. He got this information by deciphering cuneiform writing from old tablets left over by the Sumerian dynasty recovered by Brits between the 1850s to 1890s in modern-day Iraq. There are online cuneiform libraries. You can see photographs of some of these tablets. If you take the time to read the book of Genesis in the Bible, you can see it's derived from these stories on the tablets 2,000 years previous. Adam was genetically created. I feel that whoever created us screwed up because we have that natural greed and evil inside of us. Why couldn't we have been created with the inability to be jealous and greedy? I always felt that the Ten Commandments were too limited to describe the scope of human depravity, evil, and weakness. In college, I read The Divine Comedy by Dante Allegory written in 1371 with the chapter The Inferno about people being punished in hell for committing the seven deadly sins which are Pride Greed Gluttony Lust Sloth Laziness Anger Revenge Jealousy So that's where we are. I have found that people cannot only be evil towards others, they can violate some kind of natural inherent code of dignity and morality by dishonoring themselves. We were not born to be a bunch of fat slobs, watching TV, eating junk food, smoking dope. I went to graduate school where they tried to shove values clarification down my throat, to accept others based on their values not to judge based on an absolute moral code like the Ten Commandments. By this line of thinking, we can excuse others for bad behavior because that's where they're coming from. That's when I started leaving the secular world to basically be a loner with my own standard of dignity. Nowadays, I'm supposed to accept everybody, even people who commit crimes and do awful things to themselves like the transgenders. When people start changing their genders because they're bored with life, society is going in the wrong direction. There is nothing good about changing your natural gender. I don't care what the psychobablists say with their fake mental illness called gender identity disorder. I heard on the Jeff Rents radio show that they have laws somewhere such that if a parent wants to abort her kid up to 28 days after birth, she has the legal right to. I'm saying that there are absolute moral standards. Don't do anything against other people, animals, or property. Beyond that, I try to live to answer to the standard my Creator God put into my soul at birth so I'm accountable to myself all the time. What I have to do to feel good about myself is to release a good load of the good positive as opposed to destructive addictive natural energy inside of me all the time, constantly, on a regular basis. That's how I stay happy in harmony with myself. There is no other way. If you mess with other people, you know it and you're thinking about it during your quiet moments. If you're a lazy, gluttonous addict, you know you're betraying who you were born to be. Be a good person too. Treat people as if they were what they ought to be and you help them to become what they are capable of being. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Treat people right. Give them more than they expect. Make them feel good. A friend is someone who lives for what you create together right now. You are the people of God, he loved you and chose you for his own. So then, you must clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
Be tolerant with one another and forgive one another whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else. You must forgive one another as the Lord has forgiven you. And to all these qualities add love which binds all things together in perfect unity. Colossians 3 12 15. Try to be at peace with everyone. Hebrews 12 14. Accept people on their own terms. The way to deal with people is to be nice, helpful, and try to make them feel happy for the moment. They judge you in the first five seconds of contact so at the very least, be neutral and bland. Don't be arrogant and snotty. At the very best, be pleasant but don't offer a phony smile or come on too strong too soon. Just be coolly casual and nice. Give someone a compliment in a casual way like you really mean it and they will like you immediately because people are generally so starved for attention that they will fall for it every time. Tell almost anyone they're interesting, they will think you mean it and keep flapping their gums. By talking to someone casually, you show you like them so they like you back. Merely by offering a bland sociable comment, you show you're being friendly. That's the best you can do because coming on too strong and friendly is just as suspicious as being cold if not more so. The way I deal with people is I give them lots of space. I'm not nosy. I never impose and I don't have the need to constantly socialize and talk to others like I did when I was younger and felt worried about being lonely and trying to see what other people were thinking about to learn about life. My basic philosophy is to be sociable and non-threatening but generally don't trust people, especially with money and in business. People I deal with don't know how cynical I am because I play along with everybody. I act like a trusting chap but I'm not. It's not that important to me to argue to get my point across. I know nobody cares about anything but their own point of view anyway. A man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest so why bother arguing with people? You can't change their minds. People will use you and betray you if you enable them by being a pushover. The next time somebody close to you betrays you remember what I said here. I think it's partially human nature and partially the capitalist, pop culture world of material excess we live in, the I want it all, I want it now ideology. Most of us are way too self-centered to be purely loving for its own sake. We can't see past what's in our own heads to feel for the other guy. No matter how negative the person might be that I'm dealing with, I always first assume that I'm gonna get positive energy out of them so I go in with that expectation, to feed off whatever positive vibes they're sending me to send it back not to go in shriveled up dreading the encounter. You have to be open to get open vibes back. I always watch my tongue. I never talk too much. I let them do most of the talking and stand there like a supportive friend, nodding and smiling like a stupid, old Buddha. People give you what you give them except for the few bastards and bitches who are hopelessly selfish and hateful all the time. Most people think they're fascinating and beautiful. By talking to them, you reinforce this thought in them so they like you back because they think you see how fascinating they are even if you're just going with the flow being casually nice to anyone who bites just for the entertainment value to see what other people are thinking about even if you don't really give a damn. Be easy, cool and fun. The way to make people like you is to engage in small talk so that you each get a sense of each other and if you get to a point of friendship or romantic love with someone, this ritual never ends. Most people, especially women with whom you're connected to personally, need you to touch bases with them all the time with meaningless small talk otherwise they think you don't like them anymore or are plotting something against them by your silence. Girls aren't happy with silence. They need their husbands to talk to them for a few minutes every day or two so they know where your head is at. Even meaningless rants about nothing in particular reassures them you're still in love with them. Women over 30 know that a man could leave them for a younger chick at any time. That's the battle of the sexes. Women get uglier with age. Men get more wealthy and mature. Be a good person 3. People have to get a red on each other daily, especially your loved ones you live with which is why, on those days you don't want to talk, you have to make a few lines of small talk anyway to show them you're not mad at them, you just don't feel like socializing much. Treat people like they're part of your family or good friends. 
pay attention to the little details of what they say. Always be pleasant. Be a middle-of-the-road type of person who makes others feel comfortable. Don't run off at the mouth. Move fluidly from one subject to another. Know when the conversation is over and bow out gracefully. Use pauses and silence in moderation to let the conversation take on a natural rhythm. Don't be too profound or a know-it-all. Don't interrupt. Don't dominate. Be yourself unless you're a bore then learn to act happy. Be interesting. Speak gently and softly. Among men in the modern world, deep friendships are rare because we've all been conditioned to stay superficial, never breathe a word about our problems and carry our own crosses so all my relationships with my buddies are at a safe, superficial level which is sociable enough but doesn't really do much for me much as far as feeling a satisfying intimate connection. If I come across someone who snubs me or I don't intuitively like, I ignore them, avoid eye contact, keep my head down, act like they're not there and get out as soon as I can. This is better than saying something stupid to start a fight. You can learn from negative people and turn any negative encounter into a positive situation. Whenever you come across someone being a dipstick, keep your mouth shut, smile to yourself and be thankful you're not like them. Say to yourself you will try extra harder to be the exact opposite of whatever negative behavior they're showing. Everybody in your path is there to teach you something, even the negative ones. Learn what you shouldn't be like. The way to be a good person is to be good to yourself. If you respect yourself, you will have some respect for the sanctity of life and you will respect other people as copies of you on some level. The unspoken code out in public is to mind your own business so I'm nice enough but don't smile like a naive fool nor do I get into anybody's face. If I feel good, I give a homeless guy a buck, make casual conversation with strangers, if I feel bad, I stay away from people. Life in America is generally people rushing through life, working their jobs, going to their cubby holes to watch TV detached from everybody else. Your best bet in general for peace of mind and social expediency is to be a good person by culturing a calm supportive nature about yourself. Just stay cool and relaxed and don't try to be too friendly because a lot of people don't want the burden of having to be friendly to other people. They want to be left alone unbothered. They're stuck in their heads, don't understand you and don't really want to just like you're stuck in your head living your life. If you see someone in need, reach out, give them peaceful conversation, subtle encouragement, a shot of love, inspiration, a boost. Kindness is easy when you feel good about life so if you want to be a good citizen, be good to yourself, get your youthful spark strong then you will have true joy and energy to burn and you will want to reach out to the world somehow. Ultimately, we're all a bunch of loner souls caught up in our own melodramas made up of our need for money and material things, our private fantasies, heartaches, tragedies, triumphs and relationships with real people. Sometimes we want intimate contact, sometimes we don't. This is life as lived day by day. Through it all, you must have the sense to know that you have to hang on to your inspired youthful spark otherwise everything else in your life is a wash. When you meet someone for the first time, they're checking you out to see if you're friend or foe. You develop trust over time by proving you're a non-threatening positive force but even still, face-to-face -face encounters with people can be tough because oftentimes, you have nothing to say but you still feel an obligation to touch bases socially. I simply try to be a good person and make pleasant, non-controversial small talk. If there's nothing to say, I move on. I don't try to force conversations. Even the closest among us are still infinite distances apart in terms of what others really know what we're thinking beyond our public personas. Be a good person for. Many people fear other people. They're insecure and shy, they may feel lonely in a crowd or when they feel tired and weak, they don't feel like facing other people. Many people feel tense for one reason or another sometimes. When I sense tension, I move on and leave them be. A lot of people feel self-conscious in certain social situations, especially when several or more people are focused on them. Regardless of what situation you're in, 
don't let groups of people make you alter your behavior because you feel self-conscious. Always be your true self. Keep your dignity. Try to talk to people as though you were one-on-one -on -one even if in a group and everybody's trying to act cool. Don't belittle someone just to try to get a laugh. Don't talk negatively about people to other people because these people may assume you're negative and will talk about them when you turn your back. Don't force conversations. Always tailor yourself to whoever you're talking to. If you sense discomfort or the conversation dies a natural death, close it off and move on. Many people don't want to talk or make friends. Let sleeping dogs lie. You don't have to be stoic like we're supposed to be out in public but at the same time, don't push for social interactions. Just make a few pleasant remarks. If somebody wants to talk to you, they will. If not, don't push it. Don't be too friendly. Be pleasant. People are suspicious of over-friendly people so be nice but don't come on too strong. There are many negative, small-minded people out there. Once you realize somebody you're dealing with fits into this category, your best bet is to be superficially pleasant when you're around them but otherwise try to avoid them as much as possible. Small-minded people are negative for either of the three following reasons or all of them put together. Excessive vanity, ego problems, have to feel superior to everybody. Anger at the world for not being successful enough. Narrow mindset caused by a lifetime of brainwash from the world. Many of these people see life from a box with a limited point of view and set rules and regulations that don't allow them to see the big picture nor the more spiritual flow that life should be. Many negative people subconsciously feel inferior and unfulfilled on the inside even though they don't know why so they deal with it by being jerks on the outside in real life to try to give themselves some kind of warped good feeling for the moment but they can never be fulfilled because all their actions are negative and empty. Many people in positions of authority try to abuse their subordinates even though they don't realize that all this power is artificial, it has nothing to do with who they really are as human beings. Many of these losers don't even realize they're jerks. Some get enlightened, many don't. Deal with these type of people minimally if you have to but otherwise avoid them because they will just drag your soul down. If you can't sense some kind of good intention coming out of a person, don't deal with them much unless they prove to you otherwise by their actions. I don't particularly care what people think about me because I know how fulfilled I am with my life and how insecure most people are in their private thoughts so if someone tries to put me on the spot or embarrass me in a conversation, I simply write them off as negative people and avoid sociable conversation the next time I see them. I give them short, terse answers to let them know indirectly that I don't like them nor their company. That's how you get rid of undesirables. Other than that, you ignore them, especially all the negative stuff they say. When it gets right down to it, people don't give a damn about you much, they're thinking about their lives so don't worry about what others might be thinking about you. Just try to live a great life for yourself uninfluenced by anybody negative out there. There are losers around who overcompensate for their feelings of inferiority by being loudmouths. A line in the poem Desiderata says avoid loud and aggressive people because they are vexations to the spirit. If you're around loud people, know they're usually messed up inside. You don't have to take it. Leave the situation as quickly as possible. Be a good person 5. With women, no matter how different the players are, even a young guy with an older woman, the guy will almost always have sexual thoughts about any female he comes across and talks to. This is the way it is for men. Maybe women are the same, I don't know but I do know that men are sexual beings right down to the core thinking sexually about just about all women they meet out there in public. There can be no such thing as a purely platonic relationship between a reasonably attractive guy and girl. At the very least, there will be flirting there. Most people don't want to get to know other people too well, to get too deep with them because it's safer and easier to stay superficial plus the fact that we're more concerned with our own lives than the lives of others so we only want to hear their stories to stay sociable but not so much that they drag us into their problems, miseries, melodramas, and ego trips. The golden rule is to never make waves unless someone is disrespecting you blatantly. 
Be pleasant to get what you want out of any deal. People respond better to pleasantness than adversity. The second you betray any sense of sarcasm or animosity in your voice is the second you've made an enemy who will try to get you back one way or another. People are generally quite vengeful and will remember the time you snubbed them if an opportunity comes up for them to get you back. If you have a gentle, calm voice, you will disarm most people who will respond with gentleness too. One second of a loud, arrogant tone in your voice and you've alienated someone. Life goes a lot easier if you're nice to people. Be a good person 6. People will open up to you only if you give of yourself first. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching or cool one pain or help one fainting robin unto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. Emily Dickinson The world is full of trivial, narrow-minded people, some just petty and stupid, others inherently evil, that you will come across who will try to use you or take advantage of you one way or another. Forgive the negative lost souls of the world, even if just in your mind, then forget about them as quickly as possible. If you choose to stay around a petty lost soul it's your fault for being so starved for companionship that you choose to stay with the louse rather than get rid of the bum. Look at negative, rotten people as a gift to you when you're faced with them because they make you realize how lucky you are for not being like them and make you spiritually stronger when you learn to deal with them quickly, roll over and forget about them without any effect on your life. If you give in to bitterness and hate, it will drain your soul's natural healthy inspired energy. If you're powerful enough to forgive and forget, even if just in your mind and keep moving on with your life, you win because you're proving to yourself how strong you are that no petty minds out there can phase you no matter what. You can't love everyone so don't try. You will be intuitively attracted to three types of people. Your soulmate, your romantic love connection. A few kindred spirits, people who think like you. Friends, people who are not like you but are still good, decent people. Everyone else, except for relatives who you're stuck with, is basically your environment like furniture or trees. Sure, be nice to them in a perfunctory way, smile, and even use phony charm if you want but don't kid yourself. There's no such thing as a holistic love of humanity. There are only a few people out there that you will really truly like or love from the bottom of your heart, a kind of in-group who are people basically like you. Don't necessarily judge people by outer look. Give them a chance to reveal their souls to you. Friends aren't really kindred spirits but they're good people who understand the need for sociability and don't mind being nice and cheerful to others because they're decent people who want to be positive about life so play it cool, don't judge based on outer look alone. Even slobs can be good people. I've known slobs who were great people and great friends. Just because they ate too much of the wrong foods and smelled like pizza didn't make them bad. You have to accept people for who they are. Some people hate everybody who's not like them, I'm just indifferent to them. I live my life, mind my own business, nod my head, act superficially pleasant but don't have a strong social need to connect to people I know are different than me even though I befriend such people from time to time because we have a common motive or understanding in a certain situation. It's simply just too overwhelming to try to befriend everybody, even people you intuitively feel nothing for, because, for one reason or another you just know you don't like them. Be friendly to others and they will be friendly to you. You don't have to get deep about it, just be pleasant and light-hearted, go for a laugh, help them out if they need it, socialize and try to have fun times together. You can have business friends too. It's like that quote, politics makes strange bedfellows. The truth is that life makes strange bedfellows. You can have the unlikeliest of people come together to form an alliance when it comes down to earning money with each other or any other common cause. By the same token, it doesn't matter who you live next to. You will usually befriend your immediate neighbors to some extent because it's a wise thing to do from a pragmatic point of view. Prejudiced white people often develop friendships with black or gay neighbors because they see them as ordinary people like themselves, nothing more. The way of the world is generally petty materialism so don't expect light-hearted, enlightened people out there living for soul. 
expect small-minded people with phony fronts thinking they know it all measuring their lives by their possessions and alleged status in the so-called world. Just watch court TV sometimes to see the true nature of the beast. Be a good person 7. All the evil in the world is generally caused by anger at feeling misused and left out by a cruel system compounded by a feeling of loneliness. Most bad people are people who probably don't get enough love and feasible opportunity to do something worthy with their lives so know that anger is pain, these people are generally messed up with empty souls so don't take it personally when someone lashes out at you and know it's their problem not yours. Miserable people are often lonely and feel that life has passed them by but don't realize they have to create their own lives. Society is a bunch of solitary blobs of flesh each walking around in a world of their own creation connected to other people by the law, political system, business machine, mass media, pop culture, and the social religious delusions we share but we're all loners. Nobody really knows what anybody else is really thinking even though most of us try to act like we're cool, pro-social, hip and connected to the illusory in crowd. We all live in fantasies in our own minds known to none but us. You never really truly know anybody else so your best bet is not to try too hard because almost no one will ever reveal their true selves to you. Accept yourself for who you are, accept your life and play along with everybody else. Let them live in their fantasy worlds just like you live in yours. Don't try to change them or impose your view. Everybody loves themselves above all else, everybody thinks they're pretty damn cool and special so your job is to play along be pleasant, nice and use a bit of charm. That's the true politics of how to get along. With people. Everything you do speaks volumes about your character and if you're negative, it will be used against you at some point in time as an act of revenge so I always either keep my mouth shut or speak like pleasant jello, going along with anybody I come across because I have no ego to protect anyway since I don't care of what others might think of me or of what impression I might make on them so I don't bother with the own-upmanship games many people play. I just be myself and if somebody doesn't like that, I could care less. To get what you want, give people what they want, namely attention, compliments, charm and useful practical assistance. Don't bother with own-upmanship thinking. If you're enlightened, your ego is within you as part of your soul. You don't need to compete with other people or feed your ego by trying to appear superior or winning some illusory status games. You already feel good within yourself. You really don't need other people to give you a jolt, pep talk, or a compliment nor do you need to connect with people for comfort and support. If you need love, try to find one pure heart to be with. If you can find a few kindred spirits who share your love of life, you're ahead of the game. Everyone else is caught up in a world of their own creation, their own fantasies and problems. It's great to think highly of yourself but when you're around other people, be humble, passive and interested in them in a courteous way. Try to like people or at least be nice to them. It's the best way even if you hate them simply to avoid friction. Refuse to allow anyone to belittle your soul by making you hate them. Hate is a tough emotion because it takes so much effort. It's so much easier to be free to go along, liking whomever you want, forgiving your enemies and ignoring the rest. At the very least, keep your mouth shut around people you don't like. Forgive, forget, and keep moving, taking nothing too seriously. If you meet a downer, Get away as quickly as possible and don't let anyone interfere with your connection to your soul. There are very few wonderfully perfect people in the world. Whenever you're feeling scared, just remember that everybody else around you is feeling the exact same insecurities. People put on cool fronts but underneath, everybody's the same mash of contradictory emotions. Chapter 2 Be a Decent Person Biggest Mistakes by Most People Everybody sees the world from their own point of view with themselves as the most important thing in life so the biggest mistake nearly everybody makes is that they think others are thinking about them and concerned with their lives as much as they're thinking about them but they aren't. The biggest mistakes most people make is that they concern themselves too much with what they think others think of them namely their so-called image in the real world plus they see themselves as more special than they really are in the grand scheme of things. Granted. It's nice to feel special about yourself, 
if you don't, nobody else will but the problem starts when you think you're so special that other people are really interested or really spending their time thinking about your state of affairs. Get it through your head, everybody lives in their own thoughts preoccupied with the most special thing to them, themselves not you. Even teeny boppers can't obsess that much over their pop idols because they got their own lives and their own fantasies which are more interesting and real to them than some manufactured fantasy in the media. The same holds for your friends and lovers who don't care about your daily thoughts or routine all that much, they got their own lives and problems so the lesson is to take your focus away from what you think others might be thinking about you and focus on the reality that is your life. I did a survey on the internet and one of my biggest findings is that people think they know about their lovers' headspaces and what their lovers really think of them but the truth is that your perceptions of others and your perceptions of how you think they see you are often way off from the truth of the matter. Generally, you see others as more plain and generic than they see themselves and they see you as more plain and generic than you think you are. Everybody sees themselves as more special, good, kind nice and fascinating than others see them and everybody is a critic when it comes to other people. Self-consciousness is the anxiety caused by worrying what others are thinking of you. I just say the hell with it and do what I want to do while being pleasant, quiet and humble. Get a job and keep it. There is a think tank that came up with these skills to help get the job and succeed at it. Read, write, and speak clearly and simply. Listen and to understand. Appreciate the points of view of others. Share information. Be proficient in email and computers. Make your point if need be. Use a search engine to find info. Know a little bit of all subjects. Know basic math. Know how to add and subtract without a calculator. Have the ability to analyze a situation, gather the facts, think about it then make a wise decision. Seek different points of view. Listen to others, not just yourself. Don't be too dogmatic or self-centered. Make room for other ideas. Always see the consequences of a decision on people. For example, some people just see that they can save money by firing people but don't realize it could cause stress and sabotage. Be creative and innovative in exploring possible solutions. Make a decision, take action but if it's going badly, don't be afraid to reverse course. Have a positive attitude and positive actions. Be honest. Be nice. Recognize hard work. Take care of your health. Strive to be a positive force at work. Don't be a brown noser. Don't try to dominate others. Be accountable for your actions and the actions of your group. Take some risk but don't be foolhardy. Go with the flow. Be sociable but when it's time to work, shut up and work. Be willing to listen and learn from mistakes. Be a constant learner. Be safety conscious. You have to be able to work with others as part of a team. Be flexible. Respect others, even if they're different. Be a team player. How to be likable in business, school, or at work slash how to be a brown nose slash suck hole. Act humble, modest, deferential, and act like you sincerely like people even if you don't. You can see all kinds of phonies in the media. Watch them. They're always in character as nice, charming people even though you know they'll steamroll anyone who gets in their way. Successful people aren't necessarily good people. They just have position and maybe money. You have to act like you think they're higher and mightier than you and they can teach you something because they're so advanced. It's all about buttering up the egos of all those phonies out there who think they got something over everyone else. Most have fragile egos. If they didn't, they wouldn't care about being out there with other people. Most enlightened people do their own thing regardless of praise or criticism. Egomaniacs that may be over you like a boss or teacher are generally suckers for praise. Just don't go too heavy on it. Try to lighten the mood. Be friendly. Don't be controversial. Don't ask hard questions. There's no exact path. Many people are evil. They get joy out of seeing subordinates or students squirm. Try your charm but it could backfire if they sense you are a phony like them. 
Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Copy the people you want to impress. You have to be nice but at the same time show enough flair so they think you're cool, that you're worthy of keeping company with them, even socially. Everybody is ultimately alone. Many people cannot get enough personal contact. Except for a few sad sacks and curmudgeons, most people like social contact but the big egos want you to be deferential. If you act like a chum, they will think you're taking liberties with them. Act interested in other people. Act like you need knowledge like a mentor to help you navigate the system. Be as real as you can. Create nice, sociable social media like a blog, Facebook page, Instagram account, or YouTube channel then casually mention to others that you're putting stuff up there. They might check it out to see how cool you are. Make comments in school and work business. Start a conversation on social media with the people you go to school with or work with. Share and like their content. Act dedicated. People want to see that you are learning from their wisdom so sometimes you later repeat back something they said earlier. Be a helper. Don't just take. Help others. To make it in academia or any field, you have to be a people person. You have to socialize, be friendly and know how to make small talk. Be a good person websites. Adviceforlogist.org Adviceguide.org.uk Allaboutlifechallenges.org AskyOurNeighbor.com BehaviorAdvisor.com Cosmogirl.com slash life advice DealingWithDifficultPeople.com How to deal with annoying people.com How to deal with creepy people.com IdealPeopleModels.com LifeAdvice.com LifeAdvice.org.uk LifeTips.com People.howstuffworks.com SoulfulLiving.com Time.com slash personal WikiHow.com slash deal hyphen with hyphen impossible hyphen people Chapter 3 Business Etiquette Info Business Etiquette Info The bottom line is working hard and doing a good job. Just because the business world is full of sharks doesn't mean that you have to be part of the feeding frenzy. I personally feel that you are who you are. Beyond neatness and cleanliness, clothes don't matter but a lot of conformists in the business world seem to think that a suit and tie indicates serious professional intent so this is the convention and if you want to be taken seriously, you should consider playing the game. Poor speech is unacceptable. Speak clearly. Don't speak too fast, too slowly, or use poor grammar. Nothing defines you more than your command of the English language. If you have sloppy, poor speaking and writing skills, people will pick up on it on right away and know you're somewhat of a bumpkin who didn't pay attention in school. Books about grammar are at number 400 to number 410 and number 800 to number 810 at the library. Your image is the way you are seen by others. First impressions make lasting impressions. Try to be genuinely who you are combined with enough tact to be appropriate to the situation. It's okay to be a hillbilly redneck or anything you want but when you're in a business situation, act businesslike. That's what the term professional means, that you act businesslike no matter what. All people like the same things in others. Come off pleasant, relaxed and non-controversial. Smile every now and then. Maintain a positive vibe about yourself. Don't be a rebel just for rebel's sake. If you have to fight for your rights in some issue, do it but don't be purposely disagreeable just to be different. Dress and act appropriate to your business environment. Imitate the people around you. Wear the best quality clothing you can afford. The mantra of the business world is conservatism. It's not like the hippie professor who purposely tries to dress mod and groovy. You have to give off the impression that you're a good capitalist so wear a tie and ordinary black shoes not hiking boots, sandals, hush puppies, or running shoes. Go easy on the jewelry. If you have a nose ring, tongue ring, or if you're a guy wearing an earring, you're still too immature to be in business. Hang out with the pop culture deadbeats for a few more years until you see that they're the losers, you're the go-getting winner making money which is what it's all about, making money, 
right? If you're a woman in business, do not dress to stand out with your wardrobe. Be neutral. Speak with your work not with high fashions or jewelry. For office etiquette, the word is be appropriate for the occasion. You need all the allies you can get so try to get along with everyone. Learn your company's rules and follow them. Be on time for everything. Do not be a clock watcher. Don't take too much time off from work. Show that you love your work and are interested in it. Show respect for others. Avoid gossip. Keep your personal problems out of the office. People don't want to hear them. Keep personal phone calls to a minimum. Worldwide corporate culture is generally conservative, a quiet belief in God and status quo political beliefs. This differs across companies but in general, keep your mouth shut and stay conservative until you see what the natives are like then imitate them. Keep your written correspondence simple. Use proper titles and salutations. Include your email address and fax number. If you need to work and don't want to be disturbed, put a sign on your door or cubicle. Get your phone business organized. Use voicemail and an answering machine. Know how to make conference calls. Tell whoever you're talking to if someone else is listening at your end. Tell your secretary daily how you want her to handle your calls. Talk less, listen more. Relate to the other guy. Follow up with paperwork if necessary. At work, be there for work but don't be so serious that you get antisocial. The most successful people are those who know how to socialize and put others at ease. There are seldom situations in business when more than a handshake is appropriate. A hug might be appropriate when you congratulate a colleague you know particularly well on a promotion, marriage, or birth of a child. If someone moves in to kiss you and you aren't receptive, just turn your head away or smile and bear it. Keep meetings on the subject at hand. When you get a dissenter, thank him for his attempt at bettering the company in that way but say it's not feasible right now. Eat with the gang at lunch or have a drink after work with them here and there. Give others space especially if you have cubicles as opposed to an office. Think through a possible romance in the workplace. Try to avoid company time for personal emails, telephone calls, etc. Befriend the lowliest person, even the janitor. You never know when you will need his help. Be loyal to your boss unless he crosses the line with you then report him or quit. Lose your reverence for your boss. See him as who he is. If you want a raise or changes, tell him. If he works you too hard, tell him you need help. Give business gifts sparingly, either for a holiday, a wedding, at the end of a project or to make up for a shortcoming on your part, like an apology of sorts. Treat men and women alike in the business arena. If a superior criticizes you at work, rather than saying I'm sorry say thank you for the feedback. I will use it next time. Be a team player or at least act like one. When you have a rival, try not to stoop to his level. Be civil to him. If you forget someone's name, Simply talk without using names then get it from your paperwork later or ask one of your compatriots for the person's name. Another way is to reintroduce yourself. Offer your hand to shake, stating your name. He should state his name. Or simply ask for his business card. Read GQ magazine, Gentleman's Quarterly at GQ.com. Even if it does seem kind of corny, they have some highbrow writers who believe in dressing well, believe in class and highbrow tastes, etc. Etiquette Worldwide When in Rome, do as the Romans which means bow to Japanese guys and sing karaoke with them, eat pig feet, sausage and drink beer with Germans, drink wine and smoke cigarellos with Frenchmen, etc. Always say the magic words in the native tongue. Please. Thank you. Pardon me. Excuse me. Have a sense of goodwill at work. Help people. Be a good, nice person. Put people at ease by being a friend. You're always judged by your behavior so act accordingly. Go for win-win cooperation rather than win-lose competition. When meeting someone for the first time, shake their hands normally, 
not excessively firm as though you're doing a textbook bullshit business champion handshake, look him in the eye for no more than 3 seconds, some fools try to stare the other guy down to show their superior but this is stupid when you're trying to culture allies, be easy going, easy to talk to. Be yourself, not too formal. Try not to get angry but if someone is a jerk, let em have it, in a polite way, of course. Make alliances, try to build bridges with enemies. Don't be a show off. Don't criticize anyone in front of others. Don't waste time socializing aimlessly. Be professional at work but use the personal touch. Don't get too physically close to people thereby invading their personal space. Social skills are everything. Social ineptitude is the key to failure in life. You must be able to work with others. If you make a mistake, either ignore it or apologize then move on. Everybody sees things. Unless you're a tattletale, keep your mouth shut unless what you saw could endanger other people's lives. If somebody smokes, smells bad, leaves the bathroom dirty, etc., an anonymous note might be the solution. People want respect. When talking to others who seem superior in the status game, always use Mr. and Sir. Only move to first names when the other guy tells you to. If somebody puts you down, give them a rebuff to show you're not a can't yes. Read the Bible constantly for inspiration and to keep a positive headspace. Keep a copy on your desk for appearance sake. Make it look marked up and well read. If you're gay, you don't have to come out as this big, dramatic thing. Most people will intuitively know and not care because they got their own lives to worry about. Many minorities are tense when surrounded by members of the majority. Act cordial and don't let it bother you. In the end, show a little bit of consideration to everybody. Try number 395 and hashtag 650 659, business etiquette, at the library. Cell phone etiquette. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash cell underscore phone underscore etiquette. Let's talk.com, cell phone etiquette guide. Business etiquette websites. Try hashtag 395.52 or HF5389 at the library, hashtag 643.7 for entertaining. Cuisinenet.com slash digest slash custom slash etiquette slash manners underscore intro dot shtml. Workabroad.monster.com slash archive slash etiquette. Businessculture.com. Etiquetteforall.com. Mannersmyth.com. Executiveplanet.com slash community slash default.asp. Ravenworks.com, online community of business executives including an etiquette forum and free articles on topics of success. Etiquetintl.com Etiquettenetwork.com Etiquettesource.com Traveletiquette.com Webofculture.com slash edu slash gestures Chapter 4 Handle yourself, never let MCU sweat. Business image the term business image is an oxymoron because all smart people in business know that business is about relationships so nobody is looking for someone with an image like a facade is an image. They're looking for the real heart and soul of a person. A venture capitalist was telling me that he lets everybody come in with their polished PowerPoint presentation that they practiced all last night for then when they get that over with, he talks to them one on one. He's looking for the real person not the polished one who just did a memorized song and dance routine but what the person is really like answering questions off the top of his or her head. This is more revealing than any canned presentation. People want people who can think on their feet, have alternative plans or can make them up because things rarely go according to plan. Venture capitalists say they are looking for somebody with heart and soul who they can work with, who knows how to be sociable and be a team player. I'm not saying business image is bad but make being real a part of your business image because there is a protocol for business image in business, a professional standard so to speak. You speak in proper English, you have a good vocabulary, you can write well without making lots of mistakes, you wear a suit and tie, you act conservatively and you don't mess around like you're with your buds at the bar, 
even if you're with a bunch of men. People expect a professional demeanor which means restraint. I saw two junior executive guys at some business social function start posing like musclemen. I don't know exactly what they were doing, I think it was insecurity on their part, but it looked out of place in amongst these older guys and some complained. The boss had to chew them out to set them straight. Just because they were all there drinking at this social function did not give them the right to start acting like macho clowns. This is business image, always acting with that professional, unemotional air. Professional is another word for safe. You're always the same, focused on function, never emotional, never personable to the point of socializing. You're there to do a job. That's a professional attitude. You talk to co-workers and customers but it's only small talk. It's never deep, never controversial, never personal and never puts anyone on the spot or embarrasses them. If you go to Japan, you'll see that they have a hierarchy all set up. Junior officers are always deferential to the older guys. Over here, we don't have that system formally. We like to say we're a meritocracy, promotions are based on merit but the truth is that we got the old boys network here too. If the younger guys don't give the elders proper respect, the elders who are the ones with the power will screw them. They want the respect they feel they're due as the elders and if they don't get it, they'll think you're an arrogant punk and screw you. Be straight and direct even to the point of corniness if need be. Never relax enough to be informal. Always have that business-like, measured sense of professionalism and aloofness. People like that because it's consistent. You're always in your business image character. Somebody did a study of all the fashionably dressed men in the US Congress. They found that these men have a knack of losing elections. The presumption is that if you're spending time grooming yourself, worrying about what you're wearing, you're not focusing on the job at hand, you're frivolous, you're not a great worker. The lesson is don't overdress. Dress conservatively in neutral business attire. Take care of yourself to look healthy and vital but go easy on the metrosexual thing. Whatever you do, don't buy the hype about making a razzle-dazzle first impression. Don't come on so strong that you look like a textbook case of Mr. Brown Nose Go-Getter. Be more calm and relaxed. Speak through your work. When you meet somebody, don't try to outdo them with a dominant handshake. Just shake their hand normally, look them in the eye for a second or two then nod. The superior person expects the subordinate to look away first. That's showing deference. If you try to come off like the self-help guru or the guy hawking fitness equipment on shopping TV, people will see through it. It's over the top, not real, phony. Tony Phony doesn't wake up every morning with an electric plug up his ass being passionate about his love of life. It's just a performance. It's not natural to act like an enthusiastic, bubbly phony all the time simply because it's impossible to always be like that so don't lock yourself into some image that's not you. Be more level-headed. Be a responsible person. Respect everyone. Be polite. Use manners. Don't arrive to appointments late. Return calls. Answer emails promptly. Resolve complaints quickly. Business lunches or functions are about business. Don't be afraid to talk business while you eat. Talk about other things socially but remember that you're a professional business person. When you go to social functions, expect to be nervous like everybody else. Try to be friendly. Don't do things out of nervousness. Some people get arrogant or overbearing to deal with their nervousness. Never come on too strong. Be relaxed and friendly. If people like you, they'll give you the big contract in due time. They have talk heck you out first. If you invite someone to lunch, you pay the bill. Business-oriented meals are not for eating. Business social functions are not for drinking. You can always eat or drink later on your own time. You're there to perform and make or cement business contacts. Eat a bit of food, take a little drink but don't eat like you're hungry or drink like you're an alcoholic. The bottom line is that in a world of phony, ambitious go-getters, don't lose your dignity and be like them.
Keep a sense of civility, politeness, and friendliness about yourself. People generally know who's phony and who's real. You'll get further in the long run and won't have to sell your dignity for it. Try hashtag 650.13 or BJ1873 at the library for books about business image. Socialimage.net Association of Image Consultants AICI.org Be a gentleman. Be civil, considerate, friendly, and respectful. Make the person you're with feel like they're important. Talk but mostly listen. Simply focus your attention on pleasing him or her. Many minorities are tense when surrounded by members of the majority. Act cordial and don't let it bother you. When in public, shut your beeper off and don't blab too long if others can hear you. Leave enough information in your phone messages. When you have a message on someone's answering service, keep it simple, to the point, leave your name and phone number. Speak slowly enough so people can understand you. If you will be late somewhere, call and tell them. Too early can be just as bad as too late. Five minutes early is good enough. The best way to deal with unwanted romantic advances is not take the person seriously. Laugh, act dismissive. Remind her you're married or remind her that she's married. If you don't know something, don't live in ignorant bliss, ask questions. Always speak clearly and simply, no fancy words. Don't be vain or act too wise. Don't offer unsolicited advice or correct people on minor points. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Don't eat or drink too much when entertaining. Pray quietly before a meal if you're with a holy roller. Treat people from other countries like people who live here. Don't gossip. Use the terms MS. Or ma M for all females to keep it simple. Treat disabled people as normal. A lot of people don't want to know about your wife, kids, her pregnancy, what you do on the weekend, etc. So go easy about revealing your life unless the other person is sincerely interested. Most people don't want to talk about their lives so if you talk about your life to them, it makes them feel obligated to open up to you even though they don't want to. Personally, I think the world is too complicated and people too tense for jokes in general. There's too much room for the wrong interpretation. You can be easygoing without cracking jokes. Have a sense of goodwill at work. Help people. Be a good, nice person. Put people at ease by being a friend. You're always judged by your behavior so act accordingly. Go for win-win cooperation rather than win-lose competition. When meeting someone for the first time, shake their hands normally, not excessively firm as though you're doing a textbook bullshit business champion handshake, look him in the eye for no more than three seconds, some fools try to stare the other guy down to show their superior but this is stupid when you're trying to culture allies, be easygoing, easy to talk to. Be yourself, not too formal. Try not to get angry but if someone is a jerk, let them have it, in a polite way, of course. Make alliances, try to build bridges with enemies. Don't be a show-off. Don't criticize anyone in front of others. Don't waste time socializing aimlessly. Be professional at work but use the personal touch. Don't get too physically close to people thereby invading their personal space. Social skills are everything. Social ineptitude is the key to failure in life. You must be able to work with others. If you make a mistake, either ignore it or apologize then move on. Everybody sees things. Unless you're a tattletale, keep your mouth shut unless what you saw could endanger other people's lives. If somebody smokes, smells bad, leaves the bathroom dirty, etc., an anonymous note might be the solution. People want respect. When talking to others who seem superior in the status game, always use Mr. and Sir. Only move to first names when the other guy tells you to. If somebody puts you down, give them a rebuff to show you're not a can't yes. Read the Bible constantly for inspiration and to keep a positive headspace. Keep a copy on your desk for appearance sake. Make it look marked up and well read. In the end, 
show a little bit of consideration to everybody. Try hashtag 395.52 or HF5389 at the library, hashtag 643.7 for entertaining. Etiquetintl.com Performance Anxiety, Stage Fright This type of anxiety afflicts musicians, actors, athletes, performing artists, teachers, people making presentations, people taking tests, managers and leaders in business and anyone who has to speak in public. Bodymap.org slash article slash art performance anxiety dot html Careerfarm.com slash seeker slash resources slash performance hyphen angst dot cfm Change that's right now dot com slash performance hyphen anxiety dot asp goiskalis.columbia.edu slash 0855.html hindewebsite.com slash selfdevt slash performance underscore anxiety dot htm hypnosisdownloads.com slash download slash phobias underscore fears slash performance hyphen anxiety dot html lifefirst.com mental-health-matters.com Merck.com slash MMHE slash SEC 07 slash CH100 slash CH100 dot HTML, Anxiety Enhances Performance. Momsteam.com slash Alpha slash Features slash Performance underscore Anxiety dot SHTML. MostlyWind.co.uk slash Performance underscore Anxiety dot HTML. Panic-Anxiety.com slash Performance hyphen Anxiety dot HTM. PerformanceAnxiety.com Performance-Anxiety.com PsychologyCampus.com Social-Anxiety.com WorkingForChange.com slash article dot cfm question mark item id equal sign 20364 What about critics? Critics belong in one place, your rear view mirror. If you're doing a good job in your soul, following the course you believe is your destiny to do something worthy for humanity, don't listen to anyone but yourself. How you handle giving and getting bad remarks says a lot about you. If you're trying your hardest and do your best to correct the situation as it happens, who cares what anybody else says? Never be embarrassed. About what others say. Be embarrassed only if you don't measure up to your own standard. If people criticize you too much relentlessly, you have to think up a way to neutralize them, if you know what I mean? Fight dirt with dirt. The following excerpt from a speech frequently called The Man in the Arena, given by President Theodore Roosevelt in Paris in 1910, a year after he left office tells you what to do with critics. Ignore them, live your own life. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcomings, who knows the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the high achievement of triumph and who at worst, if he fails while daring greatly, knows his place shall never be with those timid and cold souls who know. Neither victory or defeat. Chapter 5 Looking Good Your Public Image If you feel good inside, you look good, you will perform better and people will be attracted to you in business and in your personal life. Feeling good is all about a trim, fit body, a youthful, healthy looking face and nice clothes that fit snugly and look good. Don't go for fashion and extravagance, just nice clothes that look good. Grooming books for men and women are at hashtag 646.75 at the library. Health and fitness books are at hashtag 611-613. Beyond that, your tone of voice is very important in the way people judge you. People are always checking you out to see if you're friend or foe. If you have a soft face, a friendly heart and a soft soul, people will like you and this is the key to making it in life. Forget about all that stuff about being a bastard, people prefer to deal with people they like rather than aggressive drill sergeant types. You can be a pleasant person and turn on the toughness only when you have to. To be successful, 
culture a noble but humble look about yourself. Be a good solid straightforward person. When you speak, try to be calm, communicate facts. I'm a total straight arrow meaning I'm a pleasant, easygoing guy but I never joke with anyone about anything because I know all too well how jokes can be misinterpreted. I'm a good supportive communicator and I do it without trying to be a cute funny guy. That's for immature, insecure 20 year olds not for mature adults who've seen punks trying to act cool all their lives. The bottom line about being in the public eye is to remain calm, relaxed, and in control. Don't let them ruffle you or see you sweat. Books about public image in business are at hashtag 659.2 or HUM263 at the library. ProfessionalImageDress.com Image consulting for people who want a makeover. I'm clean, neat, and polite. I don't have to put on airs beyond that but some people buy into all this image slash makeover stuff so they hire someone to supposedly give them tips on how to be cool, professional and look like an up and coming successful winner. Makeovers don't do anything. It's either in your soul or not. Some people take this stuff seriously like what you wear means anything. They're the type of people I stay away from like some guy I saw on one of them entertainment tabloid shows doing fashion best dressed slash worst dressed critiques. Etiquettepro.com slash topics.htm Imagewithstyle.com Professionalimage.org Professionalimagedress.com Professionalimagemgt.com Professionalimagedress.com Pro-image.com theprofessionalimage.net Association of Image Consultants AICI.org ColorMeBeautiful.org 800 Color Me Dress for Success Info You must literally dress like a high-class VIP all the time if you want to be taken seriously. I don't go as far as the above statement. It's geared mostly for the one-dimensional, by the book types who want to be successful the conventional way because I've seen successful people in business who have never deviated from jeans and flannel shirts. They were being themselves, giving off the image, I know who I am, take me for what I do not for what I wear. If you're good and know it, you don't have to follow a dress code but at the same time, your boss will keep you because of your work but won't promote you to a public, high profile position because you don't look professional enough. The way you carry yourself and the way you keep your workspace tells other people whether you're leadership material. In the world of business, the game is shirt, tie and suits. Always dress for success if you're serious about it. Keep your work area clean and plain. Get rid of the cute teddy bears, the photographs, the corny inspirational messages, the bowl of candy, etc. This is business not a warm, homey feeling. If you want to make it big, you have to become the only logical choice for the job. Always dress professionally but relate to the customer's dress code so he feels you're his buddy. If you're selling farm equipment, dress like a farmer. If you're selling hockey gear, wear sportswear, etc. Dress conservatively. Wear clean clothes and clean shoes. Go easy on the jewelry. A man shouldn't wear an earring. A woman shouldn't wear a nose ring, tongue ring, or eyebrow ring. Go easy on the makeup. Be clean. Go easy on perfume or cologne. Trim your fingernails. Wear a neutral color of nail polish. Cut long hair and shave. Women should wear their hair in a conservative style. If you have long hair, tie it back or pull it up for the interview. Body piercing or tattoos still aren't cool in the mainstream world. Use the following checklist in your effort to dress for success. Do I look professional to other people? Does my clothing look casual enough such that people give me dirty looks, kinda like what's he trying to prove? Is your clothing neutral or inappropriately fashionable or provocative for work? Is your clothing clean? Is it too big, too small, too short, too loud, too tight, too baggy? Does your clothing distract people because it's so loud? Is your clothing neat and well maintained? Is your clothing out of date? Do your shoes look nice? 
Are you well groomed with the short hair and neat look? Does your briefcase look professional or beat up? Dress for success websites. Mindtools.com slash coms kll slash first impressions dot htm, making a good impression. About dash face dot org, website about body image. Appearance.com. Askmen.com. Cosmeticscop.com, cosmetics info. Dressforsuccess.com. Dressforsuccess.org. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash dress underscore for underscore success underscore worldwide. Totalimageconsultants.com. Men's grooming websites. Askmen.com. Free-beauty-tips.com. How to tie a necktie knot.com. Menessentials.com. Men's-fashion-tips.com. Men.style.com. Mentodayonline.com. Straightgis.ic.gc.ca. Some dress for success material. Chapter 6. It's about who you know. Networking as an art form. It's all about your abilities with people. You're always selling yourself. Unless you're so good that people want your services or goods specifically, you have to sell yourself first before you get a job or get someone's business. The single most important characteristic of making it anywhere is to culture a network of allies and contacts. Networking in its simplest terms means having the right friends. In the Asian culture, life is about relationships. They call it Kwangzai. While we in the West frown on patronage and nepotism, the truth is that this is what makes the world go round, who you know versus what you know. Granted, who you know will open doors but you have to prove yourself afterwards. If the people you know don't respect you or your abilities, they won't open too many doors for you. When I lived in Ottawa, all the young college grad, junior yuppie people were anxious to go out to the parties and social events because they knew that even though it was hard to get a government job through the front door by going through the application process, the inside bureaucrats and politicians have the power to hire who they want, on the spot. You want to talk about brown nosing and I'm not talking just about the guys. Young girls en masse wanted those cushy government jobs. They used to flirt like hell. It's no different in Washington or with any bureaucracy. Why do you think people do internships for free or for peanuts? It's not because they want to learn more about the field. It's because they want to make connections to hopefully land them a decent job. Networking is simply the art of using people. You know to help you get what you want but they use you too when they need a favor. It's called symbiosis. It's what makes the world go around. Most really good jobs are not advertised for potential applicants to see. They exist in a hidden job market accessible only by connected insiders in the know. This method helps these people in power avoid dealing with all the hassles and riffraff that goes along with advertising for a job opening. Networking will help put you on the inside, in the know. It's that simple. People want somebody they know or somebody who knows. Somebody they know because to them, it gives them the security that you're united by a Kindred spirit bonds since you run in the same circles and know one another. Networking is a proactive approach. At the very least, through networking, you're telling people indirectly that you're a happening person, you're out there mixing it up with life. Rather than sitting home timidly, sending letters out, hoping something comes to you rather than Going out there making the scene like wow. It makes you look cool, in the flow, a sociable animal. Networking is much more powerful than rules and regulations. Some people call it patronage or nepotism. It's the ones with the power using it amongst themselves to get what they want. You scratch your buddy's back, he scratches yours, and nobody's the wiser. You can network to find a job or to find 
customers in business and continue to network. When you have a job because that's where you find out about the opportunities in your field. No matter how good and talented you are at anything, it won't matter unless you have some skills to find the right people and be able to deal with them in a charming way such that they come to like you and would see no problems working with you or recommending you to a buddy looking for a worker. No matter how good you are, if you don't have social skills, people don't need the hassle. They will wait for the next good person they can deal with in a mutually beneficial way that comes along. Virtually no one on this planet is indispensable. So you're probably not that good in which case you have to become a good guy in order to win people over. I recently went to a concert of an aging pop star and as I watched him, I thought to myself, he's history. He doesn't have the spark anymore. He's a has-been. If you want jobs as you age, culture some contacts now. Networking is not about quantity, it's about quality. Target the people who can help you out in some way and devise strategies to meet them. That's not to say disregard everybody else. Respect everybody, especially secretaries and low-level clerks. They can help you with information and someday when they move up the corporate ladder, they may be in a position to really do you a favor. Join groups, clubs, associations, trade associations, etc. Make it a point to go to the local bar at least once a month where the people in your profession hang out. Be a team player. Play golf or tennis with the people at the office. Socialize, schmooze. Don't just do your job and go home, hang out and talk to the work cronies. Go to fundraisers and charity events. Do Homework on your business contacts to impress them. Do what you do best and meet people. That way. Church is a good way to meet people. Find the right church that believes in socializing. And helping its members out. Join your local chamber of commerce and go to. Their events, especially conventions. I know. Several people who got jobs at conventions. You must find out what the trade organizations are in your field, get on their mailing lists and when there are conventions, trade fairs, etc. Even if a distance from your home, you must put on your charming face and go. Get business cards made up to pass out. Bring a few resumes in a file that you carry around with you. In order to make an impression, it's not enough. Just to meet people be helpful or offer to be helpful in some way. Be persistent and energetic in life. Don't bother much with Christmas cards but if you want to be memorable, send Christmas gifts to the children of your important contacts. If you want to impress people, find out their birthdays and anniversaries and send cards then. You might find some information in the Who's Who directories at the library. Always be polite. Don't just be generic. Try to come off as an upstanding, cool person. Get on committees at work. Be in good standing among your peers. Befriend your boss but always show proper respect. Golf with him or do whatever else he does with him. Treat everybody with dignity. One way to get noticed is to start a newsletter or inter-office weekly message sheet or write articles for your office and trade publications. The law of karma lives in the workplace. What goes around comes around so always be a good guy. Don't screw anybody over just to get ahead. Share your skills and your time with people. Never pass up an opportunity to meet someone new. Bring something to the situation always even if it's just your charming personality. Have fun, exude that air about yourself. Be nice to secretaries who may help you out with a tip. Be honest. Don't be phony. Try to hang out. 
with the extroverts or the sociable people in any group. Help people when they're down and having problems. They remember and will reward you when they're on the up. Take all your phone calls immediately such that you're not sending out the message that you're blowing people off. Professional networking groups are business. People who get together and help one another. Promote each other. For example, if I may. Lawyer in the group and another guy is a doctor. If someone asks me who's a good doctor, I say. He is and if someone asks him for a good lawyer. He refers them to me. Networking websites. Books about networking are at number 302 at the library. LinkedIn.com. Networkingforprofessionals.com. CareerJournal.com slash calendar, list of events by state. Chat.careerpath.com. CorporateAlumni.com, Corporate Alumni. Execunet.com, check under networking. FastCompany.com slash coef, company of friends, business networking groups. 5oClockClub.com, fee to join. Groups.google.com, business networking groups. HighSchoolAlumni.com, a directory of classmates from us high schools. Kiwinis.org, magazine, social service. LeedsClub.com, 800-783-3761. LetIP.com, 825 LetIP, membership organization where members exchange leads for networking. LionsClubs.org, social service organization. Network.monster.com. NetworkingFORomanOffice.com. Networkingforprofessionals.com. Optimist.org, 800-500-8130. ProsInTheCity.com, professional social group in D.C. Rotary.org, social service organization. Reze.com. SocialBC.com, the social business club. SVN.org. Social Venture Network. The Feng.org, Financial Executives Networking Group. The Transition Network.com. Tribe.net. Vault.com slash forum slash message intro.cfm. Business Clubs Info. I read somewhere that Thomas Edison and that bunch of 19th century business moguls used to meet regularly at business clubs. Based on my research, all that seems gone nowadays except for at business schools on college campuses and England which has more business clubs than anywhere else. Of course, there's business networking on the internet but it's not like meeting someone at a local business social club who connects you with an opportunity. When I was reading a few books on how to set up a world-class world trade city, they encouraged business clubs where people from diverse backgrounds in business came to eat, drink and talk together. City Chamber of Commerces would do themselves a favor by opening up their own business clubs. BuckinghamBusinessClub.co.uk EC8MI.com FormulaClub.net slash n slash services, business club formula. HamiltonBusinessClub.com IBC.org, business club lounge. MillionaireBC.com, a social business network, millionaire business club. OEBC.co.uk, Old Elizabethan's Business Club. PremierBC.com, B2B Marketplace, Premier Business Club. SocialBC.com, The Social Business Club. Toastmasters.org. Social Network slash Club slash Communities Online. A social network is not a dating website in the strict sense of the word but defined as a place to hang out through meeting new people and chatting. Everybody posts a profile which is a photo and a description of themselves with the intent of meeting people like themselves for friendship and possibly love. There are chat rooms and instant messaging for private chat. You might have heard of a teen social network called MySpace.com on the news because older men have been going on posing as teen boys, luring girls to meet them somewhere. Some social networks have a business networking agenda. Some involve people who are already married and looking for platonic friends but many people use them as a backdoor slash alternative approach to look for their soulmate. 
628 socialnetworkcom dinner and events for single professionals. 1751socialclub.com allforums.net asiansinc.com babyboomersocialclub.com blackintouch.com black people blueblood.net slash boards boomercafe.com boomers bulletinboards.com cafebabble.com slash n chud.com slash forums classmates.com clubvibes.com delphiforums.com forum.asianfanatics.net forumfind.com forums.catholic.com forums.craigslist.org forums.firingsquad.com forums.governmentine.com forums.istria.net gogetforum.com meetup.com socialbc.com the social business club socialgrid.com socialmonster.com socialnetwork.com social-network.net svn.org social venture network theforumworld.org the-networking-site.info yahoogroups.com